Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be continuing the discussion of the TD Ameritrade API, specifically using the Python package TDA API, which I have up here on my screen. Uh, thanks a lot to the author of the library, Alex Golick, who is also a member of our forum now. If you want to ask any specific questions about the TD Ameritrade uh, API or ask for any features uh, from uh, for this particular Python package, uh, he's very helpful and has kept me informed of some of the recent updates that have happened uh, to this uh, package. So that's one reason I want to uh, continue this series on TD Ameritrade and explore some of the new features he's added in recent updates. So uh, he's changed the way the order builders worked and also has added these order templates. But I also, first, before we dive into those things, I want to talk about the streaming client. So a lot of people have asked, uh, in addition to uh, the demos I've showed so far, uh, how do I actually stream data using the TD Ameritrade API? And Alex has actually added this streaming client now that allows you to do exactly that. So I'm gonna do a quick demo on how to set this up so that you can stream uh, order book data, you can stream uh, option sales and all kinds of information, level one quotes, level two order book, time of sale, you can stream even news headlines and a whole a whole lot of information you can get uh, from the streaming API. So uh, what I'm gonna do on this video is set up a streaming client and show you how to uh, stream uh, level two order book data from NASDAQ and uh, how to set up a handler to uh, handle all the messages that you receive um, from that order book. So um, if you go to TDA API, read the, read the docs. So if you search for TDA API Python, for instance, um, you'll get uh, this particular uh, Python package page, and you'll also get a link to some of my videos. But I'm gonna go to the read the docs, so this document documentation, and then I'm gonna click on streaming client, right? And so I have a new Visual Studio Code editor here. So I have a folder called TD Ameritrade Streaming. And inside of that, I just have a README because I'm gonna commit this after uh, after the video. And it's going to be found at github.com slash hacking the markets if you want to download the source code after this lesson. Okay, and then in here, I also have a requirements text which contains the Python packages that we'll be using as always. And so if you don't already have TDA API, what you want to do is do pip3 install TDA API like that. Or you can use uh, the requirements text file that I've provided. So you can just do uh, pip uh, install dash r requirements.txt. And that'll make sure you have both of these packages installed. And then one note I have in the readme is if you've been following on follow, following along uh, with the earlier videos, you might already have TDA API installed, but it's probably an older version at this point since there's been a couple releases since then. So to upgrade that, you can run this command, pip3 install upgrade TDA API, and that'll make sure you have this latest version. So it looks like uh, it's on 0 0.4 at this point. So make sure you have the latest version and you're all up to date. All right. So now that we have that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and create a new file called stream.py. And I'll also create a file called config.py as we always do. And I'll create one called sampleconfig.py that I'm gonna copy to the repository that just has uh, the example config inside of it. Um, so I have that in there and I'm going to ignore the config.py because that's gonna have my personal credentials. So I'm gonna put that in there. Uh, you don't really need to do that. Uh, so in sample config.py, we're gonna need, need a few values to be set. So let's go back to uh, the streaming client example and let's copy this as is from the source code and we're gonna make some modifications to it uh, so that it works for us locally. So I'm gonna copy this little code snippet here and I'm gonna put this inside of stream.py and I'll do that. Okay, and so you, you see it imports a few uh, specific uh, objects or classes uh, from this package, uh, imports async.io and JSON. So you should have all that already. And then uh, the first thing it does is creates a client. And video two of this series actually covers a lot of this information about API keys, account IDs, and redirect URLs in this pickle file, right? So I don't wanna dive into that too much, but just to do it very quickly, and if you want more detail, you can go back and watch the second video in this series that's all about authentication. So the first thing you need is an API key from Ameritrade. So to get that, go to developer.tdameritrade.com, and you should have an account where you can log in. 
and I'll log into mine real quick just to show you that. Okay. And once you're logged in, you have apps that you register. Uh, I've already registered an app called Algo Trader. And if I were, were to click this, it would give me a consumer key that's associated with my app. And you just copy and paste that into our config. So the first thing we're going to put in our config, it's going to be um, an account ID. So it'll be, or sorry, API key. And so just copy and paste that consumer key. And I'm putting this in sample config. My real one's gonna go in config.py. So that's where you're gonna put yours. Okay, okay. So let's just pretend we've already filled this in and I'll be filling mine in when I stop the video. All right, and then you're gonna need an account ID, right? And so I'm just gonna put the number one, two, three in a string there. So to get your account ID in TD Ameritrade, right? You just log in to TD Ameritrade where you have your account. So I have a TD Ameritrade account that I've set up just for these videos, and it just has a very small balance. And you see, if you scroll down here when you're logged in, it has this little account number, and it doesn't show the whole thing, but if you click show, you'll get that account ID. And so what you wanna do is copy that to the config file. So mine will, I believe it's like a nine digit number. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So there, your account ID is set, all right? And then we're gonna take from the stream.py, we're gonna take this redirect URI, and we're gonna put all of these things in our config file. So I'm gonna have a redirect URI. Right, I'll put that in here and that's fine as is. Um, I'll also take this uh, token path. And so we'll have a token path here. So we'll do token path equals that. And so I'm gonna set this token path uh, to the current directory I'm in. So I'm in this uh, TD Ameritrade streaming directory. So if I look in my terminal here and I type PWD, you'll see I have this uh, users Larry uh, projects TD Ameritrade streaming. And I'm going to just put that as the token path and then put token dot pickle at the end there. So it'll write the token to that file. So that's in there. All right, so you should have uh, four different config values in your config file. So this would actually be in your config.py, right? And then here, what we're gonna do is import this config. That way we can use them in this particular script. And instead of API key hard-coded like that, we're gonna do config.api key. We'll do config. Um, redirect URI, and we'll do config.tokenpath.token path and config.accountID, right? And then whatever you put in your config file will be placed in uh, these configuration values. And then the other thing we need to do is um, in previous videos, I've set up this Chrome driver. So to actually get this token, uh, you need to uh, install this Chrome driver thing. So uh, if you search for Chrome driver, um, you'll get this page. And what you wanna do is just download the current stable release, right? And mine, I'm on Mac, so I download that. And when I download that and unzip it, and I go in my directory, um, I actually have a copy of this already. So I'm gonna copy it to this folder. So I'm gonna copy my uh, TD Ameritrade stream Chrome driver. So I have a copy of Chrome driver already, and I'm just gonna copy it to my local directory. Okay. And so once that's done, you'll see this little Chrome driver files in here. So it needs that in order to uh, do this authentication step. Okay, and so if you look in my previous video or look in the source code for Hacking the Markets TD Ameritrade, uh, you'll see where I've already done this authentication piece before. So if you look at, let's see, trade.py here, uh, you'll see we do this little part where we um, authenticate from a token file and uh, use this uh, web driver to obtain the token. So I'm gonna actually copy this part as well. And I'm gonna make like a new script that just does this part that just obtains the token. So I'll call it get token.py. Okay, and I'll paste this in here. And since we're not placing any orders or anything in here, all I need is some basic stuff. And so same thing, let's replace the token path, the API key, and you could put the same stuff inside of the stream.py, but I just wanna make a separate script just for getting TD Ameritrade tokens, because we're gonna end up doing that. And I don't want to repeat that in other scripts. So there's a simple get token uh, pi file. And this is goes, again, as I said, this, I go into way more detail about this in video two. 
So a uh, config dot Chrome Chrome driver path. Okay, and so I need the Chrome driver path, which is also uh, this directory. So in our config, we're going to set one more variable called a Chrome driver path, and then we're going to set it equal to the same path, but instead of a pickle file, right? We're just choosing this Chrome driver file. So let's do this. Chrome driver. All right, we're done there. And we got our get token. And then now this should autocomplete. So dot Chrome driver path as driver uh, config dot token path config dot redirect URI and config dot API key. And I'm going to put this in the repository and you can just copy this if you want to. All right, I stopped the video and I replaced all of my config data inside of the config.py and I'm ready to run my get token.py. So I'm going to click the play button and see if this works. So it's going to pop open a web browser if it worked correctly. And what I need to do is log in with my account. And this is just a one time thing for us to get set up, right? I'm going to run that. It's going to actually send me a text message. So it's nice and secure and I can enter in the code on my phone. All right. So I'll do that. All right. And then once I do that and I give it permission, uh, you should see this token.pickle file. It appears right there. And now I have a token. And so now that I have that token, then this client will work correctly. It has the token path, the API key and so forth. And now I can run this stream client and let's just see what happens if I run this as is. So I'm going to run my stream.py. And you'll notice that nothing is actually happening, but it, it, it didn't throw any errors or anything. So this example, what I want to do, um, once you connect to the stream, so let, let's look at what it does. First, it creates a stream client. So you have a client. And then it runs this read stream over and over again. So uh, it authenticates the stream client. Um, it sets a quality of service and you subscribe to a particular uh, set of data. So this is a NASDAQ book subscription. So if you look at the TDA API uh, documentation here, NASDAQ book subscription, this is under the level two order book section. And so it looks like this function allows you to subscribe to NASDAQ level two order book, right? So you're subscribed to it, but then what, right? You need to actually write some kind of handler to handle all the messages that come in from uh, this order book. And so what we want to do is add an order book handler. And so I'm going to add NASDAQ book, hand book handler like this. So let's, let's try that. So Instead of this while true await handle message, um, yeah, we'll leave that there. But we're also going to type stream client dot add NASDAQ book handler. And we want to give it the name of some handler function. Um, this particular uh, one that's here, it looks like they used a Lambda function, which is like a like an inline anonymous function here. And they just wrote the function right there. What we'll do is just define a function outside of here. And we'll just call it a uh, um, message handler. Right, and that message handler um, has a an example. Uh, it gets a message, I believe. So sample handler. So you see, they they wrote a or Alex wrote a sample handler here, right? And so let's show what that looks like. So it has it just receives a copy of the message, and in your handler you can process any new messages you receive. So if you want to like store the message in a database or get this order book data and like write it to a file or uh, place trades based on it or run some indicators on it. You can do that all right here. So we'll just leave it like this and just take the message and dump it as is with an indentation of four. And let's just see what these messages look, look like. So I'm going to call this uh, order book handler, right? And then I'm going to do a stream dot stream client dot add NASDAQ book handler, and I'll do order book handler. And once I add that function as a handler for these messages, what you should see is um, once we're connected to this stream, uh, this handle message will uh, run and process um, all of our handler functions, and we should have it print the order book to the screen. So uh, let's do that. So I'm going to run this one more time. So I'll clear this, and I'm going to run it. And let's see. So the stream is connected, and look at that. We have this order book data that's streaming here in real time. Now, I just tried this out for the first time, so I haven't studied yet 
uh, what the structure of this is yet, but you see we have tons of data uh, coming in that is probably very useful. So what I'm gonna do here, I click up on my uh, terminal so that we see the last command, and I'm gonna use this little arrow and just capture some of this to a file. That way we can like look at it uh, without it you know, scrolling off the screen. So I'm gonna do uh, capture that to uh, order book dot text, right? And then, so when I run that, you'll see it it, run, it uh, starts writing that information to a file called orderbook.txt. And let's just look at it while it's still here. So NASDAQ book, looks like we get a timestamp uh, and then we get a bunch of content. So uh, the example, we're subscribing to Google. We have a Unix timestamp here. So if we were to type this Unix timestamp, and just to show what that timestamp refers to, um, I'm gonna go to unixtimestamp.com and I'm going to put that uh, timestamp in here. And looks like they put like milliseconds on there. So I'm gonna take off three digits. And then you'll see that's for July 1st, 2020, 622 p.m. UTC, which is actually, you subtract uh, seven hours. And so, yeah, it was 11.22 a.m. just now. And they include uh, seconds uh, and so forth. So this is definitely uh, order book data coming in here. You see a bid price, volume, number of bids, uh, bid volume, a whole bunch of uh, data coming in here. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty much the tutorial. I just wanted you, to, uh, wanted to show you how to connect to the streaming client, um, how to authenticate, and how to uh, subscribe to this order book data and write a message handler for it. And you can fill that in with however you want to process uh, these messages. So that about wraps it up. This TDA API Python package is very powerful and makes it very easy to use the TD Ameritrade API. The Ameritrade API is pretty hard to use and figure out how it works, but uh, thanks to Alex out there, who made this nice open source package that makes it easy for people like me to use the TD Ameritrade API with just a small amount of code and wraps it up and makes it very easy to use. Um, in future videos, I'd like to explore more of the features that are available here, like these order templates and this new order builder that he's added. And also this streaming client has a lot of other features uh, that I didn't cover, but it should have the same concepts where you can uh, subscribe to a, a a feed or a stream and process it with some type of message handler that you create. So if you expand this out, there's an option order book, there's time of sale data for futures options, uh, there's a news headline stream and so forth. So yeah, maybe we'll explore that in future videos. Um, and like I said, I just pushed push the source code for this video up to Hacking the Markets, the GitHub, and it's under TD Ameritrade Streaming, and I'll link it in the video description. Um, and also, if you want to keep in contact, I have a Twitter at Part Time Larry, so I'm trying to get a following going there. And also, there's this HackingTheMarkets.com, which is a discussion forum where I'm trying to get more discussion in one place because it's just too hard. I get uh, a lot of emails now with people's source code and, and direct messages, and I just can't debug everyone's code or anything like that. There's just not enough time in the day. So uh, maybe someone else can help you here. We're, we're starting to get more and more discussion going here. So uh, I'll be hanging out there and hopefully responding more. Um, so uh, thanks a lot for watching, and there's just going to be more videos in the future. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, thanks.